the main objective in this specific application and presentation as indicated in this video is to illustrate the implementation of the artificial intelligence methodology as well as the artificial intelligence hardware capabilities via the arithmetic logic unit floating point capabilities in conjunction with its uh, neural network representations in terms of the software mathematical algorithms. With the VHDL software models. In this segment, I illustrate the chip manufacturing process for the system on chip Core 5. After being sliced from the silicon ingot, blank wafers are put through 20 to 40 steps to create pattern wafers. These pattern wafers are then tested with a wafer tester and a map of the good parts are made. Afterwards, the wafers are diced into dyes. Yield of good dyes in this case was 17 of over 20, which is approximately 85%. These good dyes are then bonded into packages and tested one more time. The artificial intelligence neural network implementation, the weights and input data are stored in system memory and must be fetched and stored continuously through a series of multiple accumulate operations. Within the um, AI network. Their ability to process 3D graphics requires a several number of arithmetic logic units coupled to high speed memory interfaces. This is inherently made far more efficient and faster for machine learning by allowing hundreds of multiple accumulate operations to process simultaneously. The neuromorphic architecture utilizes floating point arithmetic using 32 bits to represent a number by its mantissa, the exponent, and the sign. The artificial intelligence <clears throat> algorithm models for the neuromorphic architecture in terms of computation are broadly divided into artificial networks or artificial neural networks, spike neural networks, and other extended models with specific data processing capabilities. Some of them, which is the artificial neural network, ANN, is the main model used in machine learning, especially deep learning, and it is the main content discussed in this specific application as I have presented in this video. In, we discussed the SNN algorithm this type of algorithm has many characteristics. First, the output of its neurons is a time, space, encoded pulses. Second, the timing domain information is expressed through the membrane potential value. 
that is the main brain potential records the historical received and issue pulse energy. As a result, multiple neurons can realize the expressionability of space time two dimensional space. There are many simulation algorithms for dynamic behavior of neurons. They are generally expressed by differential dynamic equations and also have good bionic capability. However, these are not conductive to hardware implementations. In this application, a method based on simplified algorithm, such as Leaky Integrate and Fire LIF model, is used. The principle is that the pulses connected to all axons of these neurons are weighted and summed according to the synaptic strength to obtain the integrated potential of the neurons, which it is then added and updated with the previous membrane potential to the brain or a new membrane potential. The pulse is issued if the membrane potential exceeds the set threshold. The RISC 5 SOC system architecture data transfer instructions only read one operand or writes one operand without operating on it so registers take less time to access and have higher throughput than memory making data and registers both considerably faster to access and simpler to use Accessing registers also use much less energy than accessing memory. So to achieve the highest performance and conserve energy, an instruction set architecture must have enough registers and the comp compiler must use these registers efficiently. In this video, I illustrate the system implementation of the RIS-5 system on chip subset. All instructions start by using the program counter to supply the instruction address to the instruction memory. After the instruction is fetched, the register operands used by instructions are specified by fields of the instruction. Once the register operands have been fetched, they can be operated to compute a memory address, which is a load or store, to compute an arithmetic result for an integer arithmetic logic instruction, or also equality check for a branch. If the instruction is an arithmetic logic instruction to resolve from the arithmetic logic unit, the ALU, must be written to the register. If the operation is a load or store, the arithmetic logic unit result is used as an address to either store a value from the registers or load a value from memory into the registers. The result from the arithmetic logic unit or memory is written back into the register file. And branches require the use of the arithmetic logic unit output to determine the next instruction address, which comes either from the adder, where the program counter and branch offset are summed, or from an adder that increments the current program counter by 4. 
The thick lines interconnecting the functional units represent buses, which consists of multiple signals. System on chip RISC 5 A6 CPU pipeline and architecture. Structural hazards usually revolve around the floating point unit, which may not be fully pipelined, while control hazards are usually more of a problem in integer programs, which tend to have higher conditional branch frequencies as well as less predictable branches. The data hazards can be performed bottlenecks in both integer and floating point programs. Often, it is easier to deal with data hazards in floating point programs because the lower conditional branch frequency and more regular memory access patterns allows the compiler to try to schedule instructions to avoid hazards. So it is more difficult to perform such optimizations in integer programs that have less regular memory access involving more use of pointers. The arithmetic logic unit is capable of calculating the results of a wide variety of basic arithmetic and logical computations. The arithmetic logic unit takes as input the data to be operated on call operands and a code from the control unit indicating which operation to perform. The output is the result of the computation. So the ALU the arithmetic logic unit will perform the following operations. The arithmetic operations, that is addition, subtraction, increment, decrement, transfer, logic operations such as AND, NOT, OR, NAND, NOR, exclusive OR, and also exclusive NOR. The objective is to show the implementation of a 32-bit arithmetic logic unit using the behavioral model style to describe how the operation of the arithmetic logic unit is being processed. It is accomplished by using the hardware description language, the VHDL. The behavioral style makes use of the process statement. The process statement, which is the main construct in behavioral model, allows using sequential statements to describe the behavior of the system over time. So process is declared within an architecture as it is illustrated in this video and is a concurrent statement the statement inside a process are executed sequentially. So the process reads and writes signals and values of the interface, which is input and output ports, to communicate with the rest of the architecture. As I have illustrated and shown in this video of the arithmetic logic unit, I have used several constructs to model the VHDL process statement. Also, I have used the WHEN statement. In the case statement, it executes many sequences of statements based on the value of a single expression. Also, the case statement evaluates the expression and comparison of the value of each of the choices, while the when, the when clause statement corresponds to the matching choice, which will make the statement to be executed. A 
ASIC system on chip S or C. I also illustrate in this video the ASIC universal verification methodology environment UVM. This segment describes some of the coding guidelines. The system on chip ASIC design software models were written in VHDL. The basic software coding rule is that in order to obtain predictable results, code was kept simple. Therefore, the VHDL software models were generated and written to guarantee that the synthesis would produce the desired result. UVM is a methodology for building class-based verification environments in System Verilog. Taking advantage of object-oriented programming techniques to help with code reuse. So reuse is right at the heart of the UVM environment. The building blocks of a UVM environment are objects, that is instances of classes as opposed to modules, processes and functions regarding the Verilog or VHDL. The significance of using objects is that they can be replaced at runtime given a huge amount of flexibility when it comes to reusing verification components and tests without tampering with the original source code. You can take an existing item of verification intellectual property and replace subcomponents after the sequence of transactions it generates or extends its behavior without touching or copying the source code and without the original author of the VIP having needed to anticipate any changes. UVM environment recognizes three main types of user-defined object. The three main objects types are the component, the sequence item, the sequence where the corresponding classes are UVM underscore component, UVM underscore sequence, underscore item.